Hi, Dr. Pleckner. In your research, how did you link imbalance of cortisol to be the cause of many diseases? It's an interesting question. Uh, a number of years ago, when I first got out of school, uh, I found that uh, steroids were often used. Cortisol's uh, replacements were used commonly. And I started checking to see, is it because it's such a neat preparation or is it funding an imbalance? And what I found was in measuring cortisol is that there are cortisol imbalances. And then the next step was, what does the cortisol really do? So studying that, I figured, well, it regulates your, some of your immune system, so your antibodies. So why don't I go ahead and I'll start checking antibodies? Well, as it turned out, a clinical medical group in downtown Los Angeles needed me to inspect their laboratory facilities and make sure that they were uh, proper for the animals, so on and so forth. And they wanted me to, they wanted to pay me for my services. I said, I'll tell you what, if you can do my immunoglobulins, you can do my antibodies for me. Uh, and I was doing at that time A, I, G, A, uh, M, G, E, and D. Uh, if you can do those for me, let's trade. So I started doing immunoglobulins to see how they were affected, so on and so forth. And one day, one morning, I was presented with an eight-week-old golden retriever puppy who had bloody lips, bloody ears that were probably an inch, inch and a half thick. Uh, and at that time, to reduce the inflammation, you give a shot of cortisone. You also use antibiotic. So what I did was I did the antibodies also. And two weeks later, when the pup looked just great, I rechecked the antibodies. And guess what? Antibody levels went up. Going, how can that be? Everybody tells you cortisone is an immune suppressant. If you give cortisone, you're going to suppress the immune system. But with this puppy, it didn't work that way. So I started thinking, what what did we regulate hormonally that would cause the antibodies to come up? And I arrived finally at estrogen. And so I talked to Dr. Arnold Epstein at the time, who was head of a and &E Laboratories, and I said, Arnie, let you and I develop some kind of an estrogen test because I think this is what's happening. So after doing that, we checked the estrogen, and it was all high. So what the cortisol was doing, it was funding this feedback to the pituitary and dropping the estrogen. And at the same time, it was bringing the antibody production up. And so this is how I worked my way in as a detective story to determine uh, with this imbalance why allergies occur, uh, why autoimmunity occurs, why cancer occurs. And it is the basis for all these various diseases. Uh, and that's basically how I develop the Plechner syndrome or the atypical cortisol estrogen imbalance syndrome. And how would you prevent getting Plechner syndrome? Preventing Plechner syndrome really uh, comes from preventing the syndrome from occurring. So you go, okay, how do you do that? Well, it starts with breeding. It starts with basically uh, inbreeding. And so much of today's and yesteryear's breeding was for uh, structure, not for function, for a certain head size, a certain gait, a certain coat color, a certain size. Uh, actually, in 1910, with collies, it was interesting. Uh, the collies were used here in Southern California to herd cattle. Uh, and what the uh, cattle people decided, if they could get more collies into their truck, they could handle more cattle. So they started breeding uh, these collies into smaller size animals. Well, what accompanied it was a smaller brain case and a detached retina. They called it progressive retinal atrophy. And so all of this came along for a free ride. Now, realizing this, the breeders that really, really care, what they can do is they can do my endocrine immune imbalance, which many of them have, on mom and dad, on the sire and the dam. If they're off in the same area, you don't do that breeding because it will be uh, concentrated in the offspring. Now, if both parents are off in different areas, one's thyroid's not good, one's cortisol's not good, the puppies seem to even out and are normal. So I've done this with a, a Ros Wheelock for 35 years with the Dobermans. The most beautiful things you've ever seen. Got rid of uh, enlarged hearts, got rid of... Uh, bleeding disorders called von Wildebrandt's syndrome, got rid of the endocrine immune imbalances, got rid of wobbler, which is a cervical vertebral instability and hip dysplasia, just based upon doing these various tests to decide what that parent is going to uh, send along. Now, once 
this has been determined and the puppies are born, uh, it's real simple, seven, eight weeks of age, for the breeder to pick out the puppies they think have the best personality, uh, the best size, the best looks, so on and so forth. And then what you do is you do what I call my EI3, which is a, you just do the four hormones. You have the cortisol, the T3, T4, and estrogen. The hormones won't lie to you. And so you take the best puppies that have the best levels, and this is your breed for the future. And this is how you can basically uh, prevent Plechner's syndrome from happening.